Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. I take it we're live. You're live, buddy. And it's still Friday night. So you know what that means. It's Friday Night Flies. Anyhow, I'm the man in black today. You know why? Because I was wearing red the first show, and if you put red in front of red, it doesn't really show too well. So, just in case you guys were wondering, I now know that you guys know that I know that you know, if that makes sense. So, we're, uh, I'm, well, these guys are both tying the same flies. I'm mixing it up with some still water ingeniuses. And uh, if anybody does a still water pattern, did you guys get it figured out? Mm -hmm. Zach, Zach's on it now. Zach <laughs> is the first post going, okay, you guys are going to respond to live chat. I'll do okay, it. anyhow, we got a couple new guys on the back end here trying to figure out the chat room. And if you guys join in with some chat, live chat, we got the two Scots back there. They're going to answer all your fly time questions. This is the time to hit them up, boys and ladies. Anyhow, so as I was saying, Still water, early season, ice off, number one, go to chronomid fly, right here, the blood worm. The blood worm. If you can't catch fish, still water fly fishing with this chronomid, I suggest you get out with myself or Scotty Boulder on a full day still water session and let's get you guys on the fast track to catching fish. PermanentFishFinder.com. All the rates and everything are there. I think I've done enough plug in there. Hey think, Scott, what do you think? I think so. I think you did. I think you I did. did. But anyhow, go and check out the website. Lots of information there. So tonight we got the blood worm. And we're gonna get are we down there? Right now. We're down there. Once again, the man in black is gonna give this beautiful fly a slow roll. Man. <laughs> You need I some wish special effect music. I do, man. Like, hey. <laughs> next week. Next week. And you know what? Since Scott's back, prior to him leaving, we purchased a green screen. And I really, really want to put that thing to work. That's what you guys were playing with when I was yeah. gone? But yeah. I, yeah. yeah In-house, we were sending, I sent the boys uh, like a private message. And he's like, what? There's two Brads? Yeah, we're going to mess with you guys. So anyhow, we're starting out once again with a size 14 or size 12 dry fly hook. And we're going to slip this beautiful bead over top. And I'm going to put it in the vise here. And we're going to get busy time. So you guys are probably, if you didn't see the first video, same bead. Instead of using the white snow cone bead that everybody else in the world uses, crystal we're going with crystal and it is called the ch can you read that okay a little bit more there you go right there okay so this is called the check seed bead in a size eight and it is made of pure crystal now you enough did some funky colors with your threads underneath that would illuminate through. well you, you just took the words right out of my mind oh look at that oh man. and i just uh -oh. dropped my Dropping things, and I hope that didn't just, just you break my amber. A little chartreuse that's right under there, and then the red body. You want me to go? You can, I can do all you know what? I could. Stuff. Anyhow, we're not going to for go, this go one because I'm. Do your traditional. Yeah. I really want to though. You got me thinking about it. Anyhow, so we're going to go with the red underneath. So, and to do that, just build up a little bit of red. But you still got to be able to get that bead over it. So don't go too crazy on it. So there we go. Bust that sucker off. And I think I did that with the last one too, didn't I? I put the black underneath it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you got that fancy bead underneath there. This bead is a little bit bigger than the last one, as I can see. We're going to get the red back on there. They're not perfect in those jugs. They are well, different sizes. Well, sure. the last one that I had, the last few, like I've tied quite a few of these. I've got a handful of them. They've all been pretty consistent, but this one's a little off. So you get a little bit of a base on there. Build her up. Cut off that back end, the tag. We're going to go back. I've got white rod wrap 
for you guys that lay down your own guides on rods, this is what you would use. It's a really heavy, heavy thread that I believe is made out of polyurethane. Is it polyurethane or um, polyester? That's what it is. Lay that guy on the back, wrap it up, pinch, roll her back. And you notice I'm kind of keeping it on the back. It doesn't matter so much, but once you get down to the back of the hook, you want to make sure that it comes straight off the middle of the back. And you can do that by giving just like so. You're just getting into the bend. Now I'm going to work my way back up and I'm going to form it a little bit heavier to the front because chronomids are definitely a little heavier front head and they taper to the back. So you leave that long tag off the back. We'll clean it up after. And we're using uh, red super thread. This point, I'm going to go back to the back here and I'm going to take a nice chunk of red super glitter thread by Superfly. Great stuff if you guys haven't used this stuff for doing ribbing. You can build flies, build heads, build everything with the stuff. It's it's amazing. So there you go. We're going to build that back down. It doesn't really matter so much where this rib sits as long as you don't move that red out of the way. It needs to come off the back. So at this point, we're going to work our way back up. Try and keep it smooth. build it heavier to the head. How's it looking there, cameraman? Chatting. Chatting it up. Everybody's hitting us looking with good. The information. Okay, so I'm going to build it up a little bit more in the front here. Robert Nenda. Nenza? Nenza. Nenza. What's he got? Robert. Has he got a? What is that? Robert has asked, "Is it, is that fly tie weighted?" And, and if you're asking about Brad's fly, no, there's no weight on these. Zero. Zero weight. Zero weight. See, the thing with blood worms is that you just want them to get down nice and slow. They're not real fast moving things, and you can fish them just subsurface, or you can fish them right down in the mud. Um, it depends on where I'm at. You can fish them out in the deep water. You can fish them in the shallows. This time of year, this is a pretty safe, fail-safe fly to use. So, and there's lots of information online too how to fish them properly. So, as we were chatting there, I've taken, put a quick half hitch on for a whip finish, throw my bobbin over top of the uh, cradle here, and I'm going to take this beautiful rotary vise from Griffin, which they so graciously donated to the fly tying group here, the Friday Night Fly group. And we're going to wrap this sucker up all the way up. See, the rotary vise makes this really easy, especially when you start doing size 12s, 14s, 16s. You're getting into the small stuff. You don't have to be too worried about wrapping with those big clumsy fingers you got. Let the rotary vise do the work for you. And you can see here. This is making it man. this is making it pretty freaking easy. And you want to crowd the head a little bit with that wrap at the end, okay? The biggest thing is do not let this wrap slip in your fingers or you might as well say I want to wrap it all over again. That's pretty well what it says. So keep your down downward pressure on that. Go around it. You don't need a whole lot to anchor it because with the head cement it locks it all down. Anyhow, so I'm going to go around it twice at the head, pull it down nice and snug, cut off that rib, and finish it with a quick whip finish. And we're getting very close to being done here. And I mean, if I wasn't chatting with you guys here, you can tie these off very quickly. Very, very simple pattern that is very, very effective in catching still water fish. Early season. Early season. Sitting in your belly boat. Soaking up the scenery. Because uh, with your, even with the, the, 
the uh, mosquito pattern that I did earlier, you're going to take in a little bit of the scenery fishing those guys because it's a slow retrieve and you just kind of take it all in. So same thing with that tail. I don't know, does it show up okay in that? Yeah, it breaks oh, it apart nice. So it just breaks it apart. And like I did with the other one, when you're finishing chronomids, you always spin your uh, vise upside down if you've got the rotor, if you have that novelty, because you don't want that lacquer to slip down into the end and you want it to all kind of pile up in the bead. So you take your head cement, your lacquer, give it a good lacquer in. Have you tried any with like UV, like uh, some of the light UV? You know what I haven't. I uh, I don't actually own any of the light UV, but uh, we actually just got a new sponsor that is with the UV resins, and we're really looking forward to them. I'm not going to spoil Mr. Zach Copeland's uh, announcement for next week, but anyhow. This is my version of the uh, bloodworm larvae. Anyhow, are we going to go back up top here? I'm sure you guys got lots to say about, uh, leave them in the comments, man. Let us know how you guys make out with these patterns too. It's early season, still water. Spank them. Are we up top? Mm -hmm. Anyhow, enjoy the fly. Uh, we've got a couple, are you tying one tonight, Ethan? We got Ethan left and... Uh, Zach's going to wrap it up with his uh, beautiful little pattern he's been spanking fish and squamish with. Anyhow, thank you so much for watching tonight. And as usual, tune in to uh, Friday Night Flies on Facebook. Go to facebook.com slash Friday Night Flies. Check out our fishing reports at permanentfishfinder.com slash reports. Get the local scope, uh, scoop on the uh, local waters. <laughs> the, local the men in black. Anyhow, signing out. Thank you so much for watching.